Hello, I'm Mateen Durrani, editor of Physics World, and I'm here at the Balby Mine in the northeast coast of England to find out more about the search for dark matter. I'm about to travel 1,100 metres underground to talk to Sean Paling, manager of the dark matter facility, about the latest work in this fast-moving field of physics. So Sean, could you remind us what dark matter is and why it's interesting? Yeah, so uh, the phrase dark matter itself basically means stuff that's out in the universe that we can't see. Uh, astronomers and particle physicists over the last few decades have realised that there's much more out there than we can see. So the stars and the galaxies we think make up less than 10% of what's out there. 90% of what we think the uni universe is made of in terms of matter is missing. So that's what dark matter is. Um, the reason we think it exists is by the way things move out in space, that's one of the reasons. For instance, galaxies rotate much too fast, they should be flying apart. There seems to be a force out there holding them together. Uh, and what we think is happening is there's missing matter there that we can't see, and the gravity from that missing matter is holding things together. So that's dark matter. So why do we need to come underground to look for dark matter? The reason we need to come underground is we think, uh, from various studies over the, over the decades, we think that what this dark matter probably is, is particles. Not big objects in space, but lots of little particles. And, and specifically particles that are very, uh, very difficult to detect. They tend to pass through matter very easily. And so, um, so the reason we're down here is, we, down here we run very sensitive particle detectors. These are machines that just give off signal, signals when a particle hits them, uh, kind of like a ping, if you like. Um, if we were to run these detectors on the surface of the Earth, there's lots of background radiation. Some that's in the air, some that comes from um, materials around us, and some that comes from s space. Uh, the stuff from space is called cosmic rays. Now, if we were to run our detectors on the surface, our detectors would be swamped by the noise from these cosmic rays and this background radiation. So now, we've got a kilometre of rock above our head down here. It absorbs all that background radiation. So here, our particle detectors are in a very, very quiet environment. So we can listen for these signals from the dark matter particles. So Sean, what are the biggest practical challenges of having to work underground? Yeah, uh, the biggest practical challenges are, there's, there's a couple of things. It, uh, one is operationally working in a mine. Uh, you know, we're, we're physicists, we're not used to working in this sort of environment. And because we're in a working mine, there's a lot of health and safety requirements. That's why we're wearing these helmets and what we're wearing here. Um, so, uh, so operationally that's something we have to consider. Also all of the equipment you see down here has all been brought down this, this mine shaft and has been, there's about 600 metres between the mine shaft and here. It has to be built on the surface, taken apart, brought down the shaft, brought to here. So that's one difficulty, but you know, we do it. And, and so the other point is, uh, is, is reducing background radiation. And this is common to all of the other dark matter search experiments in the world. Despite the fact we've come underground here, a kilometre underground, we've got all this rock above our heads uh, shielding us from the radiation on the surface. We've got to reduce the remaining background radiation that's down here. So there's radiation coming from the walls, just small amounts. There's radiation in the air. Everything we're about is reducing background radiation. So that's one of the other difficulties common to all dark matter search experiments. So this is why we're wearing this clean room outfit. Everything has to be ultra clean to get dust off it. Um, and it's why all the materials we build our equipment out of are ultra pure materials, pure copper, pure lead, pure steel. Everything has to be made clean and free of background radiation. So those are the main difficulties. So what have researchers at Bowlby managed to achieve so far? Now at Bowlby, we started very early on in this field, something like 20 years ago. Our detectors are almost prototypes then, but we were amongst the best in the world. We developed this field, and over the 20 years, at times, we've had the most sensitive detectors in the world. So we've been ahead of the game, in, but we haven't been finding it, but we've been ahead of the game at looking for it. We've been looking for it harder than anyone else. And so where we are now, though, it is us and the, the world dark matter community, we now know that the detectors we've got down here are about the right sensitivity we need to be looking for dark matter. We could be finding them this year, 
or it could be a number of years, a few years down the line. We don't know. It depends on the nature of the particle. But so what have we been? What have we achieved in 20 years? We've been developing and leading the field in the last 20 years, and we're at the point now where we and the other teams around the world, are, you know, if it's there, we should be finding it in the, in the next couple of years. So, Sean, what's the most likely candidate for dark matter? In particle physics, we have something called the standard model of particle physics, which says about the particles we know about, electrons, neutrinos, quarks, and that sort of thing. Uh, particle physicists now think that as well as the stuff we know about, there's a whole set of other particles that uh, kind of mirror particles to these that we think exist in nature, uh, and, but we haven't found yet. And one of these particles, the lightest one of these, uh, is called the neutralino. Uh, and if it exists, it should have been born in the Big Bang. It would have uh, stayed in the universe as the universe evolved. It would have actually have dominated the way in which uh, gravity worked in the evolution of the universe, and it should still be here now. So certainly a favoured candidate is the neutralino, and it's that particle that all of these detectors here, both of our detectors here, are optimised to look for. So how does the Bulby lab compare with other dark matter facilities around the world? It's very different in the sense that it's a working mine. Um, this, uh, what we do here is a very small part of what goes on at the mine here. It's a huge local employer, this, the, the mining company here. Um, and for that reason, this partnership we've got with them means we, uh, we sort of get this at a very low cost in, 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 in Britain. We've got a world-class lab running these experiments at a very low cost because they let us use their space. So scientifically, it's equal to those other labs around the world. Some are a little bit better in some areas, some are a little bit worse. But from a, a collaboration and a cost point of view, uh, Bowlby is, is unique. And what does the future hold for experiments here at Bowlby? The immediate future uh, uh, holds running this thing behind me here, and this is the, the Zeppelin experiment and the Drift experiment just a bit down the way there. We're running two world-leading dark matter detectors down here at the moment, so our immediate future is running those. Long-term future, we don't, we're not sure. I mean, the whole idea of looking for dark matter is such an important one. Um, the prize of proving that dark matter is, is what we think it is, such a big one in physics, such a, 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 you know, a great thing to find. So the whole looking for dark matter thing will carry on. Will it carry on at Bowlby? We hope so. Bowlby is a very unique place. Uh, it's a working mine. We're physicists working down here. The mine let us use this site. It's a, it's a unique relationship. We get to do this in this country for a very low cost. We would love to continue this sort of study, uh, this sort of search at Bowlby. But, you know, it all comes down to governments and, and government funding.